All right, here we go. Celia, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thanks, Adam. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. I am so excited. Over 20 years experience in, in marketing. You, you've been a CMO in a number of organizations. And for those listening, you all know we're deep in season three, adoption of marketing mindset and the employee experience. And if you've been with us from the beginning, you're probably like, okay, I see where this is headed. We began with change management, L and D. Um, and eventually we all agree we need to meet our employees where they are. Who knows more about that than CMOs? And Celia is going to take us down the path of answering the question of how do we segment internal audiences? Boy, that's a question we need to start with when we think about any communication with employees. But I want to talk about Celia. How did you get to this point of view? We're talking about marketing internally. Some folks run away from that. Others are in violent agreement. You are obviously in violent agreement. How did you get to this point of view? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's evolved, right? Over the years, um, marketing used to be so focused on the external. And I think there was this awakening and, and people realized, look, we have so much benefit to be gained if we start thinking about marketing to our employees. What a great set of advocates. What a great um so many of them are customer facing. There's just a lot of benefit when you start thinking about marketing internally versus externally or in addition to externally. And um, it's it's just a, you know, you especially from being in tech, right? And B2B tech, uh, your employees are your greatest asset. And and so you you want them to understand where you are as a company, the benefits of working somewhere. You want to talk with them about their experience. And, and um, I think it's, it's, it's a great thing for a marketer to think about their internal audiences as well as their external. And in many ways, if they're not, how could you possibly be authentic in communication with your external audiences if your internal become an afterthought? So really, you, you, what do you preach externally, whether it's related to your purpose or values, to how you project your culture, or even how you're talking about your product or service. If you're not addressing both audiences, are you, can you be authentic? Yeah, I think authenticity is such an interesting um, point. And, and, and you do want to be authentic, and, and, and you want to certainly be uh, consistent and authentic when you're talking to your prospect and your customer, and that's kind of second nature to a marketer. But the authenticity that's required with your internal groups and um, thinking about your employees is, is really important. Totally. Well, we're now going to dive in. So, so the audience kind of knows the protocol for the last, I think it's been 10 or maybe even 15 episodes. When we talk about this emerging market, adoption of marketing mindset in the X, we start with who should own this, a raging debate. <laughs> One that ranges from, you know, when you think about different size organizations, different industries, uh, sometimes I get the answer, everyone. And when everyone owns it, does anyone really own it? So, Celia, let's start with people, prospect, not people side. Who should own the adoption marketing mindset internally? Yeah, I agree with you. If you say everyone, then nothing really moves forward, right? So you have to have some key owners. I'm not going to single it down to one, but um, my partner in crime team tends to be my head of HR, right? Like I think you've got your chief people officers, your people that are responsible for your employees, and you really want to strike up a tight partnership with them. And, and that's the way we've done it here at Verant. Um, we have an employer brand function and we, 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 Think about our employees from a marketing perspective, but it's very much in partnership with HR. So that that team um, dotted lines into both organizations. It really is a shared team that we work with together to drive the employee experience. So, Celia, if you could, for those that are listening in who want to form this type of a partnership, right? Because I, I think in every organization there is a level of partnership at the executive suite, at the C level. Mm -hmm. But as you get into the day to day, I think in many organizations, there's a siloed, hey, you're accountable for external. I'm accountable for internal. You have your metrics. I have my metrics. It sounds like you went beyond that. Could you in broad strokes educate the folks listening? Like, how, what is, how do you go beyond and what does a partnership dynamic look like? 
And I, I think that one comment you made right there at the beginning about, look, it's easy to form that initial partnership at the exec level. It's one to one. We agree. Everything is great. But forming the different layers and the relationships has been really important. And I also want to make it clear, like, I'm, I'm like, oh, we have a team on employer brand. We started with one person originally. We've grown it a little bit. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be a a massive resource effort in the beginning to get things started and to make meaningful change. And um, from an employer brand perspective, yes, we have shared metrics at a CMO, um, CPO level that we, we are concerned about. Um, and those metrics are shared and reviewed by the broader executive team too. So it's not just the two of us in it together. We've got a whole team that's concerned about this. And then at each level, we're working with different people so that the HR team is working directly with our creative team, or our messaging team, our content team when required in order to build out the tools that we want to have for our employees and to be able to effectively message to our employees. And that's one of the reasons I love it being a shared responsibility between HR and marketing. Marketing tends to have a lot of the resources and expertise that HR needs in order to fulfill and execute on employer brand and employer experience. So we definitely have a tight partnership there together. And you know, you mentioned employer brand. I'm starting to realize, I think I've, I'm logged in 400, maybe 500 conversations in the last year, not episodes, I'm at okay. 90 plus. And I'm starting to see employer brand is a signature of really progressive organizations that care about their people, because this is where you, show your kind of put your money where your mouth is in a way yeah. by allocating the resources and and in a little bit you think like a marketer you start with one and then you're adding more and more as you realize the value of it so if you and you mentioned something i want to kind of zoom in on you said we have some of the resources on the marketing side and uh you know how open are you to to sharing those resources are we saying the same design folks are designing content for internal audiences that design for external yeah, exactly. Exactly. You've got um, expertise and skill sets that are available in marketing that are beneficial to the employer experience and brand. And and so we are like our design team is actively involved in designing for what we want to do. Um, and from a skill set perspective, you, you mentioned it at the beginning segmentation, thinking like a marketer in terms of how we go after what am I designing for my recruiting phase, for my pre-starter phase? What about those new hires, the alumni I might want to talk to? There's marketing and communications that you want to segment to each of those. And there are people in marketing that are certainly partnering up with HR to drive what that content looks like and what are those key messages? Um, do I need to build a video or, you know, or whatever for it? I, I love that. I, I want to just keep going with segmentation. So we know that the mastery of segmentation lives on the marketing side. And uh, we also understand that quite possibly we know more about employees than we could possibly know about any audience. I mean, the number, the information that's there, and I don't want to get into Big Brother. I'm not talking about collecting more information. What we already have. So how do you partner with HR in order to support them in, in elevating their game when it comes to the, the segmentation game? All right. So one of the things that plagues a marketer is having a great database and great information about their target audience. And you're right from an employee perspective. It's a goal. Like we know who they are. We know how to contact them. We know where they're located. And so it really opens up a lot of possibilities to be very targeted, to personalize and talk to them and to design programs that fit certain segments. And I know when I was talking about segmentation, I'm talking about the employee life cycle, which is very important, but we've also got um, regional segmentation. Who's, who, you know, regions have different cultures and how they want to work, what experience they want. Um, we also have differences in the types of employee in our R&D organization versus maybe our services or sales organization. So we're thinking about all those when we design an employer program, an employee brand program, and it's, it is great. You do know them and you're right. It's not big brother. It's more about understanding who you're talking to, 
and being able to communicate with them on their terms, meeting them with what they need is, is a pretty exciting proposition. It's not something marketing always has when they're going after a prospect, right? What a, what a data rich database. Like if Absolutely. we look at it from that perspective. So when we think about segmentation, do we, do you begin with a goal in mind? What does success look like? Is it something that HR comes in and says, Hey, we are trying to solve for X and what is that? Or, or is this a marketing saying, Hey, let's have a conversation. Maybe you haven't thought about leading indicators as we have in the world of mar marketing. Marketing has evolved in so many ways and has become more mature and sophisticated how to explain that the dollars, the resources are being allocated will lead to outcomes. So maybe if you could walk through starting what success looks like and then how does segmentation play a role in, in getting us there? Yeah, I think, and you're right, it's the business goal that you have in mind and HR comes to us with a potential issue, let's say, um, we need to close we've got during the great resignation and when hiring was all a frenzy you had people getting multiple offers you didn't always know when they were going to start or not start with you it was worse in certain geographical regions than others so one of the things that we heard a lot of people tackling was okay i've recruited this great person we're so excited to bring them on the team but how do i how do i build that relationship in between we've made that offer to their starting with variant or with our company and um so one of the things we worked with hrm was okay let's look at the pre-starter is what we call it and let's design a program for them and we had a, a really great ideas come forward from the team where they're you know here are the people we want to communicate with them here are the messages we want to deliver let's have a personal message from our ceo from the different executives let's tell them what to expect and and start to really get them engaged in what life's going to be like as a volunteer and and so we we work through that and, and to solve exactly it's a business led we had a problem that we needed to solve we want to be more effective in this stage of the employee life cycle what can we partner on? What can we build? What programs can we execute on to, to solve it? And it, it's, it is data led. Absolutely. I, I love, it's almost like building a journey as we do with customers, right? It's a journey step by step. And what are the different messages that will resonate best? Exactly. It is. And that, you know, that's where that pair hits a parallel track with what we people have historically thought of as, as, as external marketing. You can lay it across internal as well. You've got a journey people go through. There are peaks and valleys. There are different things you need to um, communicate and, and understand for them as they go through this journey. And how do you build that right experience at each stage is so important and it should be personalized. Yeah. Yeah, I've been reflecting on the conversations over the last, you know, I think it's nine to 12 months and I've been looking at patterns, which employee experience uh, pain points appear most mm -hmm. and, you know, recruiting continues to show up and it makes sense, especially in certain industries and marketing now is pointed straight into recruiting. How do we now, and I'll say, how, how do we measure impact that marketing would have on recruiting? Is it how many we're bringing on? Is it speed with which you know they're getting up up, up to you know up to a certain level of performance? How do we think about that? Yeah, you're you're thinking about it like a marketer again. You're looking at okay, what channels am I going to recruit from? You know, is it going to be LinkedIn? Is it going to be uh, a recruiting fair and events? And and then within those channels, how effective am I? How many candidates am I getting? How many diverse candidates am I getting? How far are they going in the funnel to become um, an, an employee? What what's my conversion rate in terms of, you know, are they moving from step to step? Am, am I closing that deal? Th those are all things that you can correlate to how you would have traditionally thought of as a marketing pipeline. But these are people, and so when you think of it as they're they're people going through this process. They're your most valuable asset. How do I make that process as good as it can be and as effective as it can be? Because you want to get the right people in the door as fast as you can. Yeah, for sure. And I love that you brought up, hey, 
a message from the CEO from other executives. How cool is it for someone joining an organization? Now, sure, they understand it wasn't a message made specifically for them, but the organization cares enough to have a message that appears at the right time in their journey to come inside their, into the organization. I think that's super cool. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, so, Celia, when we when we talk about examples of really successful engagements, there was something that you, you brought up in our previous conversation. You talked about building an online community. I'd love for our audience to learn more about what a successful um, engagement looks like. Yeah, so we're um, we're always looking at engagement and different metrics. I'll tell you, we, we're really excited. We just did an employee survey. I think we had close to 80% of our employees participate. So. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, which is a great thing. And and then one of the communities we launched earlier this year was our, our V Wellness, which is a community geared toward the health and well-being of our volunteers. And when we were working with people about, okay, well, what's our expectation? We're going to launch this. Are we going to get? And they're like, hey, shoot for 20s, shoot for 30%. That'll be great. And I, I believe um, we're at close to 60% of our employees are actively engaged in it. And it shows you the, I, I think it shows the desire and the need to form community. We have people working in a very decentralized manner around the world. Most organizations, some are in office, some are you know part-time in office, but when we saw it take off the way it did, it really showed us what a what an appetite there is to bond over you know a walking challenge or a health you know things like that. But we're really excited to see it and, and keep it going and continuing to push on that front. It's great, sixty percent engagement. Yeah, oh my God, that's unbelievable. Yeah. What what maybe some pr marketing principles? And, and is there a segmentation thinking that went into getting to 60%? Were there any influence? Or like, what, what principles from the marketing side that the audience can say, oh, we should try that in our organization? I think um, product launch, right? Like you want to you wanna think about how do you manage a launch, an effective launch, and get people engaged in it. And there was a lot of planning that went into it between HR, IT, and marketing about what's the right um, kind of, there was a drumbeat coming up to it where we were letting people know what was coming and we were excited about it and communicating that. We, um, there were various sets of communications that went out. Sure, you had email, but we also, we have an internal, our intranet, our global connect community that we let people know about it. We have um, a tool we use, Snapcoms, pop, you know, pops up on the desktop and lets it know. And, and we kept the, the things going and, and, and we, let, we were transparent about involvement as well when it did launch. And um, yeah, it just I think I really do. Again, it's that parallel to marketing, thinking about we're launching this. It's, it's like a major product launch. How do we want to design that launch? How do we, we want to create some rolling thunder so people get excited and then make sure people are um, on that community and interacting on that community um, was really important. It, and it's what's interesting, you mentioned various technologies and I wanna go there, but, but before I do, these are my words, not your words. If in my experience in talking to HR and even internal comps folks that don't have marketing background, there is this idea of, well, we told them it's coming. And then the marketing is where, yeah, once. Do you know <laughs> how many times someone needs to hear a message to hear it for the first time? Let's be empathetic to how much is happening in their world. They may have had the full intention to participate. But right. once they finish that meeting, then they open their phone. Whew, life, life went on. So, Celia, with, with, with that commentary, just thinking about whether repetition or you mentioned sharing those that are joining, maybe there's a bit of fear of miss, missing out. So you're creating more, different motivations for different kind of law of diffusion of innovation, like different groups that are onboarding. Um, so maybe take us, take us if there's thinking there, and then let's go with that into technology. How do we think different channels that are available to us internally? I'll say we had, um, 
again, it comes back to that partnership with HR. We didn't have to sell them on over communication. They were there with us when we were like, hey, you know, and you're right. You have to tell someone so many times about different things and how they're coming. But they, they everyone was so invested in making it a success and wanted to partner together on it. And so we, um, we really, when we were designing the program and all the different sorts of communications, we tied it in with our, our employee kickoff at the beginning of the year. And it, it just, it just went really well. And people were excited to work on it. You know, it's one more thing that you've got to do. Like you said, life happens and things are so busy, but I think people recognize that people spend so much time at work, and which is again, why employee experience is so important. Um, having a and building and fostering community that isn't just about the task at hand or the the product you're building it's about relationships that you're building at work is so important so, so let, let's go into repetition and uh, talk about different channels but kind of have the lens i think the audience listening and i say this over and over again we're in an emerging market this is where marketing was just beginning back in the day Right. And, and my approach silly has been, how do we meet them where they are, meet where their eyeballs are? I don't think people want more apps, more technologies to download. So how do you think about channels kind of both current state and maybe paint a picture as a marketing mind? Where would you like it to go? Um, I think channels we and we didn't we didn't add a lot of channels for this. We added obviously the wellness community, but in terms of how we were communicating and just more broadly with the employer experience program, we used a lot of existing channels and just tried to make them more effective and impactful. So yes, we're using email, but okay, I want to hear from the CEO or I want to hear from the head of HR. So we use different people to communicate different types of messages or rationales about why to, why to do certain things. Um, we really worked on the, the design of our Global Connect community, which is our internet, to make sure we were putting the right messages front and center, making it more interactive, um, communicating better with them about things that matter to them. Um, and then uh, channels like the Snapcom, Zia Media, hey, this is really important. Let's have it pop up. Let's let's communicate about that. And we're very careful not to overuse certain channels. Some, mm -hmm. some people find um, a pop-up intrusive. So that if they see that from us, they know it's an important message that they need to pay particular attention to. Um, and we, you know, we use events where we can have an in-person, we'll have an in-person, but where we can do a virtual and do a fireside chat with, you know, a couple of our executives where employees can ask those questions. We do that as well. And um, it, it's all about the channel mix and using it appropriately um, has been really important to us. How cool is that? We're bringing the terminology like a you know, channel mix, yeah. you know, exactly from marketing and, and we bring it up and we start really thinking about it. Well, this makes sense. And this makes sense. And, and, and kind of, yeah, back to segmentation question. And, um, you know, so, so this event, this online community you created, so there's a way to segment based on engagement. Did they participate or, or enroll? Did they not? Did they take on a challenge? Did they not? Did they create a challenge? So there's those kinds of data points. Mm -hmm. But as you think about the segmentation of internal audiences in the broader sense, whether it's okay. onboarding performance, management, benefits, wellness, how far down the rabbit hole, I should say, of segmentation would we go? Do we go, dare we think about individual level, personalizing to a point of, or do we say managers as, as groups and how long they've been with us? Give me some, some thinking that that's happening in, for you as you think about the future of segmentation? I think about, yeah, I, right. I think eventually with the right technology, you could go to the individual. You can do that, but, but it, it's important to know what you can do effectively and that's going to work for your organization. And so by, you know, 
you can segment to the nth degree. And I think it's important, like, let's look at the employee journey. Maybe we want to look at regions or functions and start there. Something manageable that you can pick out. And, and it's it's probably something where you, you sit down with um, marketing and HR together and like, tell us what your big challenges are. Like you were talking about at the beginning, let's, let's figure out and then let's segment around that challenge and what we need to do to solve it versus um, defining the segments right away and then going, trying to get at it. So I, I think segmentation today, we, we look at it like I said, employee journey, we look at regions and, and differ things by region. Um, we look at some individual functions as well. And we kind of stop there right now. Um, and I think eventually with, with different tools and tech, we can take it a lot further. Um, but I think there's so much um, benefit and what we can do at the levels I talked about, I like let's start somewhere and then get going. Don't don't try to define the perfect segmentation at the beginning. Totally makes sense, and also a marketing mindset because you know I think in the world of marketing experimentation, let's let's learn, Let, let's yeah. try and fail if we need to fast and and, and do it again. Right. Um, so so Celia, when you think about kind of this emerging market, kind of really I'm zooming out all, all the way out. What other thoughts do you have in terms of where we're headed in terms of the, the future of adopting marketing mindset and employee experience? Are there, do you think it's, there's more on the technology side? Do you think, where will the innovation come from? The partnership you have with HR, do you see that deepening and maybe there's additional structures being, I, I know the audience, they're all looking for the clues for where we're headed with this emerging market. So we'd love to hear additional thoughts. Yeah, I think, oh, you know, I, as you mentioned in the beginning, I'm a lifelong marketer. I'm very passionate about it. And one of the things I love about marketing is it's always changing and evolving and pretty rapidly, right? And I think employee experience, employer brand is is one of those evolutions that that's opened up this whole new window to what we can do um, and the impact that marketing can have in partnership with other groups on on, on, on a company, you know, if you have great retention, if you're keeping people engaged, you're be able to promote people from within, you're recruiting the right people, all of that is possible. Um, those are metrics that you can improve upon with a really great employee experience and a partnership between marketing and other groups inside the organization. Um, and so I, I, I know a lot of CMOs are challenged all the time about what are you doing for the company? How are you making a difference? You start talking about pipeline and employee engagement, which is all great. But, but this is a whole landscape where marketing can provide a positive impact on the employee side. And I think that's pretty exciting um, for, for a marketer. Positive impact on the employee side. And for those of you who are running into challenges, bringing up the word marketing in the context of employee experience, um, we, you really ought to create a paradigm shift for those you're, you're speaking with, because that is most certainly uh, the future. And innovators like Celia and other guests I've had on, they absolutely get it. They see it. They're driving. They're driving us toward the emerging market. And now, so yeah, I could go on with you all day, and, and I know segmentation is one of so many topics that we could take on, but I would like to just, if you could leave our audience maybe with a piece of advice. This is not an easy journey. It's not for the faint of hearts when you're taking on an emerging market and you're an innovator who sees it, and you're shocked. How could others not see it the way you see it? <laughs> um, so, so what advice w would you give the folks listening as they continue on this journey within their organizations? I, yeah, I think a few things. I think start small. There are a lot of things that you can quickly measure and make an impact with that don't, I mean, you don't have to start off with a grand plan for employer experience or employer brand. You can start off with one initiative, so show some quick wins and then move on. And and don't do it in a vacuum. This is a great area where you can form partnership with IT and HR and, 
and decide together what is that common challenge we want to help and go solve and then get a defined issue or challenge and go figure it out with them. And, and so it's a good opportunity for partnership, for impact, and it's nothing that has to be um, huge to start. It'll grow and spin from there, but that, you know, get some quick wins. Quick wins, you're all listening and, and get started. And I think that the continued focus on partnership is so critical. Celia, I just, you know, I want to say a huge thank you for you taking the time, sharing your brilliance and uh, for being a part of this community. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Thank you so much for having me here. I really enjoyed it. It was a pleasure. Over now, Celia.